Greetings and welcome to The Basement, where we can never get enough of original music and work tirelessly to bring you the best up-and-coming artists from around the UK. Normally we stream live because live is how we like our music, but this month is Rock on Wood Charity Music Festival in Loughborough and the team are deep into preparations, so we have prepared a treat for you in advance. Before the big reveal, please like and subscribe to our channel to increase the exposure for all the artists who stream with us. That done, it is an enormous pleasure to welcome a fantastically talented singer-songwriter to the basement, who will be entertaining us for the next hour. Her name is Charity Stowe, and we'll be having a chat with her in a bit. But for now, here's one we prepared earlier. Hi everyone, my name is Charity Stowe and I'm a singer-songwriter based in Nottingham still at the moment since 2019, uh, soon to be moving back to Stamford in Lincolnshire. Um, I wanted to come on and play you some of my original stuff. I'm going to start right from the beginning and go up to um, the song that I most recently wrote just to give a different uh, process going through all the songs that I've written and, and so you can see the songwriting process throughout the years. I started writing songs when I was about 16, 17. I'd never written anything before. And the song that I'm going to play next called Here is the first one that I ever wrote. So it was, it was really exciting to get this finished um, and also to take it into the studio and um, kind of learn the process of turning an acoustic song into a proper produced track. So this is Here. Um, I hope you enjoy it. And it goes like this. Let go of me You know it ain't that easy One day I stepped across the line Just to see what I could find I was lost, I couldn't see Started to fog my memory I couldn't find it here I couldn't find it here I couldn't find it there I couldn't find it here Here A thousand times I walked away Every one of them I wish that I had stayed You look so great from far away Up close you're just another day I couldn't find it there I didn't find it here I couldn't find it there I didn't find it here Started to fog my memory. I was lost, I couldn't see. Started to fog my memory. I couldn't see. Oh, my memory. I couldn't find it there. I didn't find it here. I couldn't find
So you can tell, two chord song, first one to, um, to ever try. So it's always good to start simple and just have something that I could actually have some uh, ideas coming through for. I never thought I'd be a songwriter. I always thought I would sing other people's songs. So that kind of started the ball rolling and from then on, it just kind of came out of me, which is really nice. Songwriting is such a weird thing, whereas sometimes um, it just happens and you don't have to think about it and they're the best times. And this is another one that, that happened exactly like that. I recorded it um, just at the start of lockdown. We got about one recording day and then we couldn't go in anymore. So a lot of it was done from home, which is really cool to get a home recording set up. Um, and the video was lots of uh, videos of my friends and family in lockdown. We put it all together to make a really nice kind of montage of that time. Um, a very, very weird time, very stressful time, but to have something nice and positive to come out of it, come together and, and you know, have something to focus on. Um, so this song is called Fool. It's about doing what you want, believing in uh, your abilities and doing stuff that makes you happy. You know I struggle sometimes Find myself rolling into your eyes How can I find something new When it's always gonna be you
you. So that was fall. They came out, out in 2020, summer of 2020. So weird, weird time, but um, such a lovely thing to have a focus on. And I found that having that to spend my time doing and um, kind of have a positive focus was really, really helpful. So songwriting can be helpful in so many random ways and that was definitely a way that it helped me. So when I moved to Nottingham in 2019, I just wanted to do music. I decided that music was something that I could not try, um, something that I loved and that made me happy and that no matter what mood I was in, as soon as I started playing, you know, over mic or playing with my uh, friends and family, I just was in a better mood. And that's kind of what's, what music is all about. And <clears throat> I moved to Nottingham to pursue that. And Nottingham is such a, an amazing place for music. So it was an amazing hub to have, especially Derby and Loughborough being around, um, meeting lots of amazing people. And this is the first song that I wrote when I moved to Nottingham. And I think it's got that, that sense of community, that sense of change, um, that sense of <clears throat> the people coming together in this city that um, makes such a huge difference and makes people like me coming into it feel so welcomed. Um, so this is called Wake Up and it's a little bit rockier, something a bit different, um, but I hope you enjoy. My life has changed in such an unpredictable way. What are we doing here? We should be jumping up out of fear. So I scream and I shout and I laugh. I'll do anything for a second chance. It's not our fault that we will It's our golden hour We're sitting here like wilting flowers It's our final chance We just want to see our children dance So I scream and I shout Just 
the thread. <laughs> Thank you. So I wrote that going back into my little room in my shared house when I first moved out of my parents' house and it was a very scary time, a lot of change, but <clears throat> it, was, it was such a good move and I'm, I'm so glad I did it. It gave me a chance to meet a huge um, range of people that I just would never have met without moving out of, out of my hometown and sometimes that's what you need is a bit of a change, a change of scenery just to kind of <clears throat> ignite those creative uh, fluids and, you know, just enjoy what you're doing and, and find the inspiration in the little things. So coming back to Nottingham after lockdown was uh, something I was really looking forward to and there was so much that I wanted to do. And when I did come back, I released an EP and it's called Perfect Thought. And it's something that I'm really, really proud of. I was kind of working towards a sound that I really wanted. Um, Billy Martin-esque, Lucy Rose-esque. And I just wanted to have that live band feel and kind of that chilled summer vibe and I think this song is exactly what I wanted and I wrote it in three three or four or five minutes in my bedroom at home and I remember going down immediately to play it to my mum and dad and and my dad saying yeah we should definitely record that so um it's something that I'm really proud of it's so simple but it's just um it's a happy song I hope you you know it makes you feel happy when you listen to it um it's called Perfect Thought and I hope you enjoy Won't you take me out to see Where we can go and make our little family How I'd like to be by your side Out in the sun with a little glass of wine
Perfect Thought is a, is a special one. And it was really lovely because I got to um, get some people to sing on it with me. So it wasn't just myself. It's always myself doing the leads and the backing. And that one, I wanted kind of that community feel. Um, so I had my dad playing piano on it, my boyfriend playing, uh, singing on it, and a couple of musicians, Gus Watt and Joel Black, singing some backing vocals on it as well. So it was a really nice community one. And to work with some amazing musicians, I mean, Gus is from Portugal, so it's nice to kind of reach out to people over social media. Um, and that's the beauty of it, to find people that are willing to sing on your song, which I'm, I'm so, so lucky to, um, to be lucky enough for them to sing on it. And the song is about looking forward to the future, what I want in my future, happiness about the future. And um, if you're lucky enough to be in a situation where the future is very exciting um, and happy and calm, then yeah, you're extremely lucky. And thankfully, at the moment, my future is looking pretty good and I'm excited. And one of the main reasons, because I've got someone lovely in my life and if you've got anyone that um, you love and you want to tell them that then this is a song you can tell them that with um, it's called You I got lost Timing all wrong. You know I'm never the first. Should have done this a long time ago. You look so perfect in this light. Your Tell me the truth I don't have to hear it from you But if I could The words they would say Would be so poetic In every way My body has changed be the same because of you Never gonna be the one 
to write a stupid little song about you. But here we are, you're making my ink run, and I never felt so Thank you. Charity, welcome to the basement. And what a fantastic set. We've been really enjoying it here. How's it, how's it been uh, playing in the basement for your first time? Oh, great. Thank you very much for having me. It's always nice to do these kind of different live streams and have like such a quiet room to kind of put the music out to. So yeah, I always enjoy doing these kind of things. It's a great opportunity. So thanks for having me. Oh, fantastic. I mean, you've done, yeah, as I say, you've done live streams before and obviously you've got a fair gigging schedule as well. Um, so tell me a bit about how you started off in the music world. You said you uh, you started off quite young when working, oh, sorry, living in Stanford. Is that right? Yeah. So the first time I performed in front of people was probably at um, a little village open mic um, at the place called John Clare Cottage. And I was probably about 15 and my mum made me go. I wanted to go, but she kind of, she pushed me because she knew I wanted to do it. But I was a bit too scared. And that was kind of the first time that I had ever performed in front of people. And they were just such a nice supportive um bunch of people there were you know people that i'd known since i was really small um and it's it's really important to have that atmosphere when you're first yeah, trying out sure. it's so scary um and that's kind of where i started i played with my dad a lot there and then when i moved to, to nottingham um you know had went to basically every open mic as much as i possibly could uh, to get yeah. that experience in and that was so that was before you started putting pen to paper on your for your own material was it yeah, so I only really started writing when I was 16, 17, um, and only started recording when I was about 18. So there was a lot going on before yeah, sure. those, uh, before anything came out. And is guitar your main instrument, or do you play other things as well? Is that the, What's your writing process like? Yeah, guitar is the main one. Um, I love kind of playing with my voice and learning really extravagant and um, difficult uh, vocal songs as well. But uh, guitar is kind of the way that I could perform um it's something to accompany myself that you know starting off playing a few chords and learning songs if you like <laughs> it's not too difficult so yeah. it's a really good starting point and uh, yeah i love playing the guitar it's slowly slowly getting better um but it's yeah it's a beautiful instrument well i'm totally an advocate of guitar playing so <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to complain about that and in terms of music production so you say you're saying you've got to, you've got your own home studio set up now a, yeah a tiny one i've got a little um, me and my dad over lockdown turned the spare bedroom into the studio, so I've got a mic and um, a little mixing desk um, onto garage van on my laptop. So that was really cool, and it kind of that spurred us on to get a proper setup. And when I was recording songs, and then I couldn't go into the studio, that was kind of vital to have. Yeah, it. I mean, lockdown has—I don't know—it's it's started so many careers. So many people we've had here in the basement have have basically, you know, they uh, it's either been bands who formed over lockdown mm. because they. Um, I suppose couldn't do any, couldn't get out there and play, or artists who started recording and uh, and mixing and that sort of thing. And a lot of whole lot of new skills got mm, learned then, definitely. and it's really changed the shape of the kind of musical world that we live in now. I think it's weird how it's impacted us. So, did the, does 
Does studio work, has that sort of changed the way you write compared with just sort of playing a guitar and going out live at all? Yeah, I think it's um, made me be a lot more experimental with my music because, as you can tell, with, with here, the first song I ever wrote mm. is two chords because that's what I could deal with and that's what I could, I'm, you know, yeah, learn Yeah, I'm from. very impressed by that. I'm not sure I would dare put the first song I ever, <laughs> I ever played or ever wrote in front of people. Um, but then, you know, as you, you know, towards the end of the set, it's, it's having those differences and understanding that, you know, yeah, a two sort of, a two chord song works sometimes, but like as a as a song as a whole and with the production, you need more to that. And I think that's yeah, what I've yeah, learned definitely. working with a producer and going to the studio and working with lots of different session session musicians that there's so much more to it that I didn't realise and I've been learning over the years. So that's been a really good learning mm. experience and a really fun way to kind of experiment with my music. And you play with the band at times as well. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very lucky that my dad plays keyboards and my partner plays guitar and his brother plays drums and our friend plays bass. Um, so I've got, you know, a, a wealth of knowledge and, oh, and expertise around handy. me, yeah, which yeah. is very lucky. But it's different, isn't it, playing in a band to just being out there very exposed on your own with your guitar. How does uh, how's that uh, differ from your perspective? Yeah, I, I really enjoy all of them. I, I, diff- I, I change them up a lot. I play a lot by myself. I play with my just with um, my dad playing piano and just singing. I do really like just singing a lot of the time. Right. Um, if I can do that, I, you know, I, I often opt for that because I just, I love just singing mm. and really being able to focus on that. Um, and then, but, you know, with a full band, it, it makes such a huge difference. I did um, a live session in Bedford a couple of years ago and we got a couple of, um, a, a bassist and a drummer that we'd never met before we found on Facebook and oh, they okay. came up and recorded you know, had a, a day of rehearsal and then recorded a whole session. And that was really, really exciting because it just brings another level to the songs and, and mm, more sure. life to it. And I think it's really exciting and important to have that range from exactly how I wrote it, just acoustic on the guitar, yeah. to like all with, you know, the bells and whistles as it is recorded. I think often that's that leads you to the best songs when it comes to the arrangement. Once it's all there and the whole full studio arrangement isn't there. If it's a song that stands on its own with no embellishment, once you've added all the embellishment, it just sort of spices it up, doesn't it? And then you, the core of the song is still all going to be great because you, you can't do anything else if it's just you and a guitar. Yeah, definitely. And even the songs that I've recorded that are focused just on my voice and the guitar, there's so much going on around it. And you realise that even songs mm. that you think, oh, there's nothing going on on here. Like, it seems so simple. There's so much going on in the background that you, you almost yeah. don't even notice as a listener. But as... Absolutely. The subliminal stuff is often the most powerful yeah. when it comes to building the arrangement definitely yeah it makes such a difference and having that experience I I really enjoy listening to music and actually hearing that now and being able to kind of (laughs) identify it (laughs) so do you are you like a words first person or a music first person or do the two just sort of happen together um I'm probably a very simple chords and structure first and then words I find it quite hard to write words without anything behind it yeah um so i normally get some chords i think sound nice together get a little bit of a a very simple structure together and kind of i just play those chords over and over again and just see what comes out um and then normally when i then go back and look at it or take it to the studio that's when it gets the chords get embellished and you know the structure kind of gets a bit more interesting but yeah definitely chords first Mm. and i just yeah i really enjoy just seeing what comes out because you often write about stuff that you weren't thinking about, but that was at the back of your mind. And it's yeah. kind of like speaking to your unconscious mind sure. um, in a way, which is very interesting. And of course, you use some some nice sort of embellished chords in your playing as well. So I presume does that sort of speak to the the melodies and that sort of thing as well? Because you were using some like oh, sus twos and things like that in the, yeah. in the chord shapes. Yeah, I mean, it's also, it's always interesting to have that I know it gives it a lot more space to have a slightly more interesting melody on top. Yeah. And um, almost also to have like jarring things that kind of uh, discord and and sound a bit off like wake up when I first recorded it to the um, actual um, recorded version. It just didn't sound, it didn't sound right, but it was, you know, it was technically correct musically. Mm. But that jarring is kind of actually what I wanted within the song, you know, making people feel a little bit uncomfortable with the music is often <laughs> quite um, a good way to catch their attention. Yeah, indeed. That's a very good point. Um, so What the World Wants, is that the name of your most recent song? Yeah, yeah. And tell us about the genesis of that song. 
Yeah. Well, that... the most recent, I mean, your, your most recent single. Yeah, yeah. Um, gosh, I've read that quite a long time ago now. Um, but that was something I was kind of thinking about a lot about society and social media and the idea of celebrity as well, which I thought was has always been quite a fascinating subject where, you know, people want this idea of, of it happening and then it happens and then it's actually a lot of the time not what they want. And, you mm. know, then you're subjected to all of these horrible, horrible things just because you are a celebrity, which I think was really interesting. And that's kind of what it's about, about societal pressures, what people think about you and kind of how to view that in a way that is beneficial to you and how to escape right. from that um, that kind of conversation in the world. Uh, I see. And you're now, uh, you're now looking to move back to Stanford, is that right, you were saying? Yeah, so I'm... So what's the music scene like in Stanford? <laughs> uh... Quieter, definitely quieter. Um, yeah, I'm, t- I'm taking a year out to do some different things, do some travelling, but also I'm going to yeah definitely be doing a lot of music. Um, and I'm just looking forward to having almost like I did in lockdown, having that space to just really be creative and not have to be creative on a specific day because that's the day I have off, mm, but yeah. to have the time to just do it do it when I want. So I'm very, very lucky to have the time and, and be able to go home for a bit and just um, reset and, you know, go on to the next stage of my life. But yeah, it's, it's a brave thing to do, though, because often you sort of think if you, if you let the momentum that you've built sort of start to lapse, then... Mm then the whole thing sort of crashes and burns. But if, at the same time, I suppose, if you've got some new ideas that are waiting to nurture, then it could be very beneficial. But uh, yeah, it's still a brave thing to do. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it would be a good, um, a good, you know, next step. And everything will always be here when I come mm, back. That's true, you know, that's true. I, you know, I've got some really lovely people who, who enjoy my music and I'm sure that they'll still be there when I come back. And, you know, I, I will be doing stuff in between and it almost will make me do more because I'll have more time. Any plans good. for where you might travel? Oh, lots of plans. Um, going to be going to California in September and then hopefully Southeast Asia maybe, but some very different things just to... Uh, I never had a gap year or anything when oh, I left okay. school. And oh, it's two very of... different musical traditions in those two places. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm hankering to have a bit of time to go back to the basics and kind of reset and get ready for the next part of my life. I suppose sometimes absorbing the atmosphere of other places is very good for kind of creative renewal as well and to give yeah, you give you ideas definitely so what else have you got coming up in your life i mean normally at this point i would ask people about their their next single release but if you're about to disappear <laughs> off for a year and do something something really much more exciting then yeah i mean probably the next thing for me will be um i've been my, my partner's musician as well so we've been working on some music together so we've got um three or four songs that we want to put onto a little ep um so hopefully at the end of this year we can kind of come together we've both got a bit more time come together and get that done because we've got so much of it recorded already but you know life gets in the way and it's it sure does. it's difficult to carve out that creative time so hopefully at the end of this year we can have some more time to to do something collaboratively and that's something i'm really looking forward to because we do have very different musical styles right. and i really enjoy coming together with someone who makes very different music to me and you know coming making something completely unique together. Yeah. Um, and it's such a, like, making music with people is the best thing in the world, so I'm, I'm really it's, looking it's, forward to that. For me, I think this is the most, yes, it's the most fun. You're kind of working your way out when you're learning to play an instrument, you're working your way up to that moment you can start playing with other people. Yeah, exactly. And be part of that community. Um, and so, from our audience's perspective, uh, they can find your stuff on Spotify. Also, you've got uh, your Charity Stone Music, am I right, on Instagram and Facebook? Yeah. Uh, anything anywhere else you would like people to, to go and discover your material yeah oh you've got you you've got videos on youtube of course as well yeah there's quite a lot on youtube and um, that's charity stone music as well twitter's charity tweets um and i've got a website charitystone.com um which is has absolutely everything i've got lots of singles videos um a little merch store um all of my live dates coming up so that's kind of the best hub um to find me at Fantastic. With a bit of luck, we'll have you back here in a couple of years' time so we can catch up on your uh, your news and your stories and your uh, your <laughs> excursions around yeah. the world. But <laughs> um, we are here for the music and it's been lovely to talk to you, but uh, how about we have your second set? Sounds good to me. And this is how the world works. This is how the world works.
Timothy You know he really screwed me Oh Timothy Oh Timothy Take a long hard look at me Day to day I do your dirty work When I get home I wonder what do you think I'm worth Day to day you monetize my worth Turns out that at least nothing, nothing Oh Timothy Oh Timothy, you know you really screwed me Oh Timothy, oh Timothy, take a long hard look at me I try so hard to tell what you're thinking Cause I'm just a pile of your dollar bills times I did, I did them in your favor, oh Timothy, oh Timothy, you know you really screwed me, oh Timothy, oh Timothy, take a look. Thank you. Something a little bit different. That was a lockdown song as well. Um, when I got furloughed and was very, very stressed and no one in um, where I used to work knew what was happening. And yeah, that was just the, oh, I can't, can't deal with it anymore. So let's take it out on the CEO. Why not? Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was a fun one to write in my garden at home. Um, and it was really fun to to do it properly with um, a, a huge band and get a really cool drummer in to commit some good uh, funky drums on there which is something that I don't have a huge amount on my songs they were always quite simple and laid back a lot of the time and that was kind of the first one that I did really uh, rocky which was really fun this one is not so rocky it's, um, it's called Eye to Eye and it's a song about friendship and how music can play a really important part in healing friendship and relationships um, and hope you enjoy it. Why did you run so far away? Did my smoke blow you away? Why did I sit and let you write all those lines that left me behind? They made me question all this time How did I know that it was right to walk away from this? We're better than this Where did I go wrong? I feel like I'm doing it right It's not my fault that 
that we couldn't see eye to eye, eye to eye, eye to eye. It's not like us to be so cold and confronting. I guess it's just what happens when time goes by. Truth is, I don't believe that you really want to leave. It's just that easy. so sad so so sad but uh, it um, brought back a friendship to my life that I miss dearly so I'm I'm happy about it now definitely and it's it's nice to kind of strip back it's similar to you I love going as as stripped back as I can especially if I'm, I'm playing in a place that's super quiet and people are really really listening I love just having that space and that silence because I think Silence is such an important, plays such an important role in music, especially in live music. Um, and I love, I love playing with that and having that space and being able to just look around the room and have a breather with people and, and you know, not be full on all the time. Um, I really love that. I love the storytelling part of it. So that's, that's definitely something that I really enjoy, especially with playing live. <clears throat> so this next song is, um, it's called What the World Wants. A la my t-shirts um, <laughs> and it's the most recent song I, I released and again something really different for me um, very very different to the rest of my um, tracks but something that I'm so so proud of it was a lot more than just a song it was a whole project um, together I did it with an amazing music video as well so um, it's something that I'm really really proud of and I hope you do enjoy let me just have a quick sip before I but it's, it's something that hopefully people can relate to or, or make you think about. Um, yeah. Isn't it funny how people change? I'm still waiting to see your face. Isn't it funny how people change in such peculiar ways? You and me were so tied up. I wanna cut loose, I wanna blow it up. I've tried once before, but. You know the people in this world, they'll never change They just want to see you in your ridiculous face They don't care about your space They don't care about her place 
For this is how the world works 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 If you got the looks, you got it right I don't want to be a part, I want to fight but it's hard to fight when you're stuck in the bottom of a big back See the bottom of an empty street, the bottom of a never ending beach. But it's not how the world works. It's not how the world works. This is how the world works. This is how the world works. It's not how the world works. It's not how the world works. This is how the world works. This is how the world works. she doing there she's got nothing left to spare it's all gone we took it away is that what we do today go jump in the sea go and see what is free oh nothing's ever Thank you so much. Um, this is going to be my last track, and it's something that I wrote. God, I don't even know when I wrote it, but it's definitely one of the most recent things I've written. And I've been doing something different recently, which is kind of going through the multitude and thousands and thousands of voice notes and notes that I have in my phone and turning, actually turning them into songs. Um, they've all just kind of been sitting there for such a long time. And, you know, stuff that I wrote when I was 18 that I haven't turned into songs. And um, this was one that I found that was kind of half there and I really wanted to finish it. I've only played it a couple of times live, so um, I'm really excited to, to do this one. Um, it's called No News and I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Wanna run away from this town Somewhere where the crime's down I wanna be by the sea Don't you understand me? I wanna go somewhere cold Just so I can wrap you up And tell you you're not too old To be missing home I still miss my home And I It's 
It's not too late to be chasing time You're ready now to open your mind It won't be done to overrun With the sand and soil running over us It's a harsh reality when I think of all the things that you labor when you try to go to sleep. It's too much worry, I just want to see you flourish. Want you to move to the sea with me, then finally it'll turn out to be something we never thought. But it could be with me And it turns out to be The best thing we could have thought to do There's no news It's not too late to be chasing time I'm ready now to open my to do cause there's no news no news there's no news you from this town Somewhere where the crime is down Let's go to the sea Then you'll understand me That was just fantastic and you can listen to more from Charity on Spotify and all of the usual places. We will be back next month on the 18th of August with Basement Favourites Dreadnought to find out what they've been up to for the last couple of years. And with the blooms high upon the July tree, we'll be here once a month bringing you the best original music live in the basement. Until next time, bye bye.